Surah 4, Al-Nisa, Women, In the name of Allah, the Most Merciful, the Most Compassionate. O people, fear your Lord who created you from a single being, and out of it created its mate, and out of the two spread many men and women. Fear Allah in whose name you plead for rights, and heed the ties of kinship. Surely, Allah is ever watchful over you. Give orphans their property, and do not exchange the bad for the good, and do not eat up their property by mixing it with your own. This surely is a mighty sin. If you fear that you might not treat the orphans justly, then marry the women that seem good to you, two or three or four. If you fear that you will not be able to treat them justly, then marry only one or marry from among those whom your right hands possess. This will make it more likely that you will avoid injustice. Give women their bridal due and good cheer, considering it a duty. But if they willingly remit any part of it, consume it with good pleasure. Do not entrust your properties, which Allah has made a means of support for you, to the weak of understanding, but maintain and clothe them out of it, and say to them a kind word of admonition. Test the orphans until they reach the age of marriage, and then if you find them mature of mind, hand over to them their property. And do not eat it up by either spending extravagantly or in haste, fearing that they would grow up and claim it. If the guardian of the orphan is rich, let him abstain entirely from his ward's property. And if he is poor, let him partake of it in a fair measure. When you hand over their property to them, let there be witnesses on their behalf. Allah is sufficient to take account of your deeds. Just as there is a share for men in what their parents and kinsfolk leave behind, so there is a share for women in what their parents and kinsfolk leave behind, be it little or much, a share ordained by Allah. And if other near of kin, orphans and needy are present at the time of division of inheritance, give them something of it and speak to them kindly. And those who would have been fearful on account of their helpless offspring they may have behind them, let them fear Allah and say what is right. Behold, those who wrongfully devour the properties of orphans only fill their bellies with fire. Soon they will burn in the blazing flame. Thus does Allah command you concerning your children. The share of the male is like that of two females. If the heirs of the deceased are more than two daughters, they shall have two-thirds of the inheritance. And if there is only one daughter, then she shall have half the inheritance. If the deceased has any offspring, each of his parents shall have a sixth of the inheritance. And if the deceased has no child and his parents alone inherit him, then one-third shall go to his mother. And if the deceased has brothers and sisters, then one-sixth shall go to his mother. All these shares are to be given after payment of the bequest he might have made or any debts outstanding against him. You do not know which of them, your parents or your children, are more beneficial to you. But these portions have been determined by Allah, for he indeed knows everything, is cognizant of all beneficent considerations. And to you belongs half of whatever has been left behind by your wives if they die childless. But if they have any children, then to you belongs a fourth of what they have left behind, after payment of the bequest they might have made or any debts outstanding against them. And to them belongs a fourth of what you leave behind if you die childless. And if you have any child, then to them belongs one-eighth of what you have left behind, after the payment of the bequest you might have made or any debts outstanding against you. And if the man or woman whose inheritance is to be distributed has no heir in the direct line, but has a brother or sister, then each of these shall inherit one-sixth. But if their number is more than that, then all of them shall be entitled to one-third of the inheritance. After the payment of the bequest that might have been made or any debts outstanding against the deceased, providing that the bequest causes no injury. This is a commandment from Allah. Allah is all-knowing, all-forbearing. These are the bounds set by Allah. Allah will make him who obeys Allah and his messenger enter the gardens beneath which rivers flow. He will abide there forever. That is the mighty triumph. And he who disobeys Allah and his messenger and transgresses the bounds set by him, him shall Allah cause to enter the fire. There he will abide. A humiliating chastisement awaits him. As for those of your women who are guilty of immoral conduct, call upon four from among you to bear witness against them. And if four men do bear witness, confine those women to their houses until either death takes them away or Allah opens some way for them. Punish both of those among you who are guilty of this sin. Then, if they repent and mend their ways, leave them alone. 
for Allah is ever ready to accept repentance, is all compassionate. And remember that Allah's acceptance of repentance is only for those who commit evil out of ignorance and then soon repent. It is towards such persons that Allah turns graciously. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. But of no avail is the repentance of those who do evil until death approaches any of them, and then he says, Now I repent. Nor is the repentance of those who die in the state of unbelief of any avail to them. For them we have kept in readiness a painful chastisement. Believers, it is not lawful for you to become heirs to women against their will. It is not lawful that you should put constraint upon them so that you may take away anything of what you have given them. You may not put constraint upon them unless they are guilty of brazenly immoral conduct. Live with your wives gracefully. If you dislike them in any manner, it may be that you dislike something in which Allah has placed much good for you. And if you decide to dispense with a wife in order to take another, do not take away anything of what you have might have given the first one. Even if you had given her a heap of gold, would you take it back by slandering her, committing a manifest wrong? How can you take it away after each one has enjoyed the other and they have taken a firm covenant from you? Do not marry the women whom your fathers married, although what is past is past. This indeed was a shameful deed, a hateful thing, and an evil way. Forbidden to you are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your father's sisters, and your mother's sisters, your brother's daughters, and your sister's daughters, your milk mothers, your milk sisters, the mothers of your wives, and the stepdaughters, who are your foster children, born of your wives, with whom you have consummated the marriage. But if you have not consummated the marriage with them, there will be no blame upon you if you marry their daughters. It is also forbidden for you to take the wives of the sons who have sprung from your loins and to take two sisters together in marriage, although what is past is past. Surely, Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. Also forbidden to you are all married women, Musanat, except those women whom your right hands have come to possess as a result of war. This is Allah's decree, and it is binding upon you. But it is lawful for you to seek out all women except these, offering them your wealth and the protection of wedlock, rather than using them for the unfettered satisfaction of lust. And give bridal due of those whom you have enjoyed in wedlock as an obligation. But there is no blame on you if you mutually agree to alter the settlement after it has been made. Surely, Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And those of you who cannot afford to marry free, believing women, Musanat, let them marry such believing women whom your right hands possess. Allah knows all about your faith. All of you belong to one another. Marry them then with the leave of their guardians, and give them their bridal due in a fair manner that they may live in the protection of wedlock, rather than be either mere objects of unfettered lust or given to secret love affairs. Then, if they become guilty of immoral conduct after they have entered into wedlock, they shall be liable to half the penalty to which free women, Mosanat, are liable. This relaxation is for those of you who fear falling into sin by remaining unmarried. But if you persevere, it is better for you. Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. Allah wants to make all this clear to you and to guide you to the ways which the righteous have followed in the past. He will graciously turn towards you. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Allah indeed wants to turn graciously towards you, but those who follow their lusts would want you to drift far away from the right way. Allah wants to lighten your burdens, for man was created weak. Believers, do not devour one another's possessions wrongfully. Rather, let there be trading by mutual consent, and do not kill yourselves. Surely, Allah is ever compassionate to you. And whoever does this by way of transgression and injustice, we shall surely cast him into the fire. That indeed is quite easy for Allah. But if you avoid the major sins which you have been forbidden, we shall remit your trivial offenses and cause you to enter an honorable abode. Do not covet what Allah has conferred more abundantly on some of you than others. Men shall have a share according to what they have earned, and women shall have a share according to what they have earned. Do ask Allah for His bounty. Allah has full knowledge of everything. To everyone we have appointed rightful heirs to inherit whatever the parents and near of kin might leave behind. As to those with whom you have made a solemn covenant, give them their share. Allah watches over all things. 
Men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has made one of them excel over the other and because they spend out of their possessions to support them. Thus, righteous women are obedient and guard the rights of men in their absence under Allah's protection. As for women of whom you fear rebellion, admonish them and remain apart from them in beds and then beat them. Then, if they obey you, do not seek ways to harm them. Allah is the exalted, the great. If you fear a breach between the two, appoint an arbitrator from his people and an arbitrator from her people. If they both want to set things right, Allah will bring about reconciliation between them. Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Serve Allah and ascribe no partner to him. Do good to your parents, to near of kin, to orphans and to the needy, and to the neighbor who is of kin and to the neighbor who is a stranger, and to the companion by your side, and to the wayfarer and to those whom your right hands possess. Allah does not love the arrogant and the boastful, who are niggardly and bid others to be niggardly and conceal the bounty which Allah has bestowed upon them. We have kept in readiness a humiliating chastisement for such deniers of Allah's bounty. Allah does not love those who spend out of their wealth to make a show of it to people when in fact they neither believe in Allah nor in the last day. And he who has taken Satan for a companion has indeed taken for himself a very bad companion. What harm would have befallen them if they had believed in Allah and the last day and spent on charity what Allah had bestowed upon them as sustenance? For Allah indeed has full knowledge of them. Indeed, Allah wrongs none, not even as much as an atom's weight. Whenever a man does good, he multiplies it twofold and bestows out of his grace a mighty reward. Consider then, when we shall bring forward witnesses from every community and will bring you, O Muhammad, as a witness against them all. Those who disbelieved and disobeyed the messenger will wish on that day that the earth were leveled with them. They will not be able to conceal anything from Allah. Believers, do not draw near to the prayer while you are intoxicated, until you know what you are saying, nor when you are defiled, save when you are traveling, until you have washed yourselves. If you are either ill or traveling or have satisfied a want of nature or have had contact with women and can find no water, then betake yourselves to pure earth, passing with it lightly over your face and your hands. Surely, Allah is all-relenting, all-forgiving. Have you not seen those to whom a portion of the book was given? They purchased error for themselves and wish that you too lose the right way? Allah knows your enemies better and Allah suffices as a protector and Allah suffices as a helper. Among those who have become Jews, there are some who alter the words from their context and make a malicious play with their tongues and seek to revile the true faith. They say, We have heard and we disobey. Samana wa asena. Do hear us, may you turn dumb. Isma ghair musma'in. And hearken to us. Ra'ina. It would indeed have been better for them and more upright if they had said, We have heard and we obey. And do listen to us and look at us with kindness. But Allah has cursed them because of their unbelief. Scarcely do they believe. O oh, you who have been granted the book, do believe in what we have now revealed, which confirms the revelation which you already possess. Do this before we alter countenances, turning them backwards, or lay a curse upon them as we curse the Sabbath men. Bear in mind that Allah's command is done. Surely, Allah does not forgive that a partner be ascribed to him, although he forgives any other sins for whomever he wills. He who associates anyone with Allah in his divinity has indeed forged a mighty lie and committed an awesome sin. Have you not seen those who boast of their righteousness, even though it is Allah who grants righteousness to whomsoever He wills? They are not wronged even as much as the husk of a date stone if they are not granted righteousness. See how they forge lies about Allah? This in itself is a manifest sin. Have you not seen those to whom a portion of the book was given? They believe in baseless superstitions and taghut, false deities, and say about the unbelievers that they are better guided than those who believe. Such are the ones whom Allah has cursed, and he whom Allah curses has none to come to his help. Have they any share in the dominion of Allah? Had that been so, they would never have granted people even as much as the speck on a date stone. Do they envy others for the bounty that Allah has bestowed upon them? 
let them bear in mind that we bestowed upon the house of Abraham the book and wisdom, and we bestowed upon them a mighty dominion. Whereupon some of them believed, and others turned away. As for those who turn away, hell suffices for a blaze. Surely, we shall cast those who reject our signs into the fire, and as often as their skins are burnt out, we shall give them other skins in exchange that they may fully taste the chastisement. Surely, Allah is almighty, all wise. And those who believe and do good deeds, we shall cause them to enter the gardens beneath which rivers flow. There they shall abide forever. There they shall have spouses purified. And there we shall cause them to enter a shelter with plenteous shade. Allah commands you to deliver trusts to those worthy of them. And when you judge between people, judge with justice. Excellent is the admonition Allah gives you. Allah is all-hearing, all-seeing. Believers, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those invested with authority among you. And then if you were to dispute among yourselves about anything, refer it to Allah and the Messenger. If you indeed believe in Allah and the last day, that is better and more commendable in the end. O Messenger, have you not seen those who claim to believe in the book which has been revealed to you and in the books revealed before you? and yet desire to submit their disputes to the judgment of Taghut, the satanic authorities who decide independently of the law of Allah, whereas they have been asked to reject it. Satan seeks to make them drift far away from the right path. When they are told, Come to that which Allah has revealed, and come to the messenger, you will notice the hypocrites turning away from you in aversion. But what happens when some misfortune visits them because of their own misdeeds? Then they come to you swearing by Allah, saying, we wanted nothing but to do good and to create harmony between the two parties. As for them, Allah knows what is in their hearts. Leave them alone, admonish them, and say to them penetrating words about themselves. And tell them that, We never sent a messenger, but that he should be obeyed by the leave of Allah. If whenever they wronged themselves, they had come to you praying to Allah for forgiveness, and had the messenger prayed for their forgiveness, they would indeed have found Allah all-forgiving all compassionate. But no, by your Lord, they cannot become true believers until they seek your arbitration in all matters on which they disagree among themselves, and then do not find the least vexation in their hearts over your judgment, and accept it in willing submission. Had we enjoined upon them, slay yourselves, or leave your habitations, very few of them would have done it. Yet, if they had done as they were admonished, it would have been better for them, and would have strengthened them whereupon we would indeed grant them from us a mighty reward and guide them to a straight way. He who obeys Allah and the Messenger, such shall be with those whom Allah has favored, the prophets, those steadfast in truthfulness, the martyrs and the righteous. How excellent will they be for companions! That is a bounty from Allah, and Allah suffices to know the truth. Believers, be ever prepared to encounter the enemy either advance in detachments or advance in one body, as the circumstance demands. Among you there is such who lags behind. Then if some affliction strikes you, he says, Indeed, Allah bestowed His favor upon me that I was not present with them. And if a bounty from Allah is given you, he says and says if there was never any affection between you and Him, Oh, would that I have been with them, I would have come by a great gain. Let those who seek the life of the next world in exchange for the life of this world fight in the way of Allah. We shall grant a mighty reward to whoever fights in the way of Allah, whether he is slain or comes out victorious. How is it that you do not fight in the way of Allah and in support of the helpless men, women, and children who pray? Our Lord, bring us out of this land whose people are oppressors and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us from yourself a helper. Those who have faith fight in the way of Allah, while those who disbelieve fight in the way of Taghut, Satan. Fight then against the fellows of Satan. Surely Satan's strategy is weak. Have you not seen those who were told, Restrain your hands and establish the prayer and pay the zakah? But when fighting was enjoined upon them, some of them feared men as one should fear Allah, or even more, and said, Our Lord, why have you ordained fighting for us? Why did you not grant us a little more respite? 
say to them, There is little enjoyment in this world. The world to come is much better for the God-fearing, and you shall not be wrong even to the extent of the husk of a date stone. Wherever you might be, death will overtake you, even though you be in massive towers. And when some good happens to them, they say, This is from Allah. Whereas, when some misfortune befalls them, they say, This is because of you. Say, All is from Allah. What has happened to these people that they seem to understand nothing? Whatever good happens to you is from Allah. And whatever misfortune smites you is because of your own action. We have sent you to mankind, O Muhammad, as a messenger. And Allah is sufficient as a witness. He who obeys the messenger thereby obeys Allah. As for he who turns away, we have not sent you as a keeper over them. They say in your presence, we obey. But when they leave your presence, a party of them meets by night to plan against what you have sent. Allah takes note of all their plots. So let them alone and put your trust in Allah. Allah is sufficient as a guardian. Do they not ponder about the Quran? Had it been from any other than Allah, they would surely have found in it much inconsistency. Whenever they come upon any news bearing upon either security or causing consternation, they go about spreading it, whereas if they were to convey it to either the messenger or to those from among them entrusted with authority, it would come to the knowledge of those who are competent to investigate it. But for Allah's bounty and mercy upon you, weak as you were, all but a few of you would surely have followed Satan. So, O Messenger, fight in the way of Allah. You are responsible only for yourself. And rouse the believers to fight, for Allah may well curb the might of the unbelievers. Indeed, Allah is the strongest in power and the most terrible in chastisement. He who intercedes in a good cause shall have a share in its good result. And he who intercedes in an evil cause shall have a share in its burden. Allah watches over everything. When you are greeted with a salutation, then return it with a better one, or at least the same. Surely, Allah takes good count of everything. There is no God but Allah. He will certainly gather you all together on the day of resurrection, the day regarding which there can be no doubt. Whose word can be truer than Allah's? What has happened to you that you have two minds about the hypocrites, even though Allah has reverted them owing to the sins that they earned? Do you want to lead those to the right way whom Allah let go astray? And he whom Allah lets go astray, for him you can never find a way. They wish that you should disbelieve just as they disbelieved, so that you may all be alike. Do not therefore take allies from them until they emigrate in the way of Allah. But if they turn their backs on emigration, seize them and slay them wherever you come upon them. Take none of them for your ally or helper. Unless it be such of them who seek refuge with the people who are joined with you by a covenant, or those who come to you because their hearts shrink from fighting either against you or against their own people. Had Allah so willed, He would certainly have given them the power over you, and they would have fought against you. If they leave you alone and do not fight against you and offer you peace, then Allah does not permit you to harm them. You will also find others who wish to be secure from you, and secure from their people, but who, whenever they have any opportunity to cause mischief, plunge into it headlong. If such people neither leave you alone, nor offer you peace, nor restrain their hands from hurting you, seize them and slay them wherever you come upon them. It is against these that we have granted you a clear sanction. It is not for a believer to slay another believer unless by mistake. And he who has slain a believer by mistake his atonement is to set free from bondage a believing person and to pay blood money to his, that is, the slain person's heirs, unless they forgo it by way of charity. And if the slain belonged to a hostile people but was a believer, then the atonement is to set free from bondage a believing person. And if the slain belonged to a non-Muslim people with whom you have a covenant, then the atonement is to pay the blood money to his heirs and to set free from bondage a believing person. But he who cannot free a slave should fast for two consecutive months. This is the penance ordained by Allah. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. And he who willfully slays a believer, his reward is hell where he will abide. Allah's wrath is against him, and he has cast his curse upon him and has prepared for him a great chastisement. Believers, 
When you go forth in the way of Allah, ascertain and distinguish between friend and foe. And do not say to him who offers you the greeting of peace, you are not a believer. If you seek the good of this worldly life, there lies with Allah abundant gain. After all, you too were such before, but then Allah was gracious to you. Discern then, for Allah is well aware of what you do. Those believers who sit at home, unless they do so out of a disabling injury, are not the equals of those who strive in the way of Allah with their possessions and their lives. Allah has exalted in rank those who strive with their possessions and their lives over those who sit at home, this even though to each Allah has promised some good reward. He has preferred for a mighty reward those who strive in the way of Allah over those who sit at home. For them are ranks, forgiveness, and favors from Him. Allah is all forgiving, all compassionate. While taking the souls of those who were engaged in wronging themselves, the angels asked, In what circumstances were you? They replied, We were too weak and helpless in the land. The angel said, Was not the earth of Allah wide enough for you to emigrate in it? For such persons, their refuge is hell, an evil destination indeed. Except the men, women, and children who were indeed too feeble to be able to seek the means of escape and did not know where to go. Maybe Allah shall pardon these, for Allah is all pardoning most forgiving. He who emigrates in the way of Allah will find in the earth enough room for refuge and plentiful resources. And he who goes forth from his house as a migrant in the way of Allah and his messenger, and whom death overtakes, his reward becomes incumbent on Allah. Surely, Allah is all forgiving, all compassionate. When you go forth journeying in the land, there is no blame on you if you shorten the prayer, especially if you fear that the unbelievers might cause you harm, surely the unbelievers are your open enemies. O Messenger, if you are among the believers and rise in the state of war to lead the prayer for them, let a party of them stand with you to worship, keeping their arms. When they have performed their prostration, let them go behind you, and let another party who have not prayed pray with you, remaining on guard and keeping their arms. For the unbelievers love to see you heedless of your arms and your baggage so that they might swoop upon you in a surprise attack. But there shall be no blame upon you if you were to lay aside your arms if you are either troubled by rain or are sick but remain on guard. Surely Allah has prepared a humiliating chastisement for the unbelievers. When you have finished the prayer, remember Allah standing and sitting and reclining. And when you become secure, perform the regular prayer. Prayer is enjoined upon the believers at stated times. Do not be faint of heart in pursuing these people. If you happen to suffer harm, they too are suffering just as you are, while you may hope from Allah what they cannot hope for. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. O Messenger, we have revealed to you this book with the truth so that you may judge between people in accordance with what Allah has shown you. So do not dispute on behalf of the dishonest. And seek forgiveness from Allah. Surely, Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. Do not plead for those who are dishonest to themselves. Allah does not love him who betrays trust and persists in sin. They can hide their deeds from humans, but they cannot hide them from Allah, for he is with them even when they hold nightly counsels that are unpleasing to Allah. Allah encompasses all their doings. You pleaded on their behalf in this worldly life, but who will plead with Allah on their behalf on the day of resurrection? Or who will be their defender there? He who does either evil or wrongs himself and then asks for Allah's forgiveness will find Allah all forgiving, all compassionate. He who commits a sin commits it only to his detriment. Surely, Allah is all knowing, all wise. But he who commits either a fault or a sin and then casts it upon an innocent person lays upon himself the burden of a false charge and a flagrant sin. O Messenger, but for Allah's favor and mercy upon you, a party of them had resolved to mislead you. Yet they only misled themselves and could not have harmed you in any way. Allah revealed to you the book and wisdom, and He taught you what you knew not. Great indeed has been Allah's favor upon you. Most of their secret conferrings are devoid of good, unless one secretly enjoins charity, good deeds, and setting the affairs of men right. We shall grant whoever does that, seeking to please Allah, a great reward. As for him who sets himself against the messenger and follows a path other than that of the believers even after true guidance had become clear to him, 
We will let him go to the way he has turned to, and we will cast him into hell, an evil destination. Truly, it is only associating others with Allah in his divinity that Allah does not forgive and forgives anything besides that to whomsoever he wills. Whoever associates others with Allah in his divinity has indeed strayed far away. Rather than call upon him, they call upon goddesses and call upon a rebellious Satan. Upon whom Allah has laid his curse, he said to Allah, I will take to myself an appointed portion of your servants, and shall lead them astray, and shall engross them in vain desires. And I shall command them, and they will cut off the ears of the cattle. And I shall command them, and they will disfigure Allah's creation. He who took Satan rather than Allah for his guardian has indeed suffered a manifest loss. Satan makes promises to them and fills them with vain hopes, but whatever he promises them is merely delusion. For these people, their abode shall be hell, and from there they shall find no way of escape. But those who believe and do good, we shall cause them to enter the gardens beneath which rivers flow. Here they will abide forever. This is Allah's promise in truth, and whose word is truer than Allah's? It is neither your fancies nor the fancies of the people of the book which matter. Whoever does evil shall reap its consequence and will find none to protect and help him against Allah. Whoever does good and believes whether he is male or female, such shall enter the garden, and they shall not be wronged in the slightest. And whose way of life could be better than that of he who submits his whole being to Allah, does good and follows exclusively the way of Abraham whom Allah took for a friend? Whatever is in the heavens and in the earth belongs to Allah. Allah encompasses everything. They ask you to pronounce laws concerning women. Say, Allah pronounces to you concerning them and reminds you of the injunctions which were recited to you in the book about female orphans whom you do not give what has been ordained for them and whom you wish to marry out of greed and the commandments relating to the children who are weak and helpless. Allah directs you to treat the orphans with justice. Allah is well aware of whatever good you do. If a woman fears either ill treatment or aversion from her husband, it is not wrong for the husband and wife to bring about reconciliation among themselves by compromising on their rights. For reconciliation is better. Man is prone to selfishness. But if you do good and are God-fearing, then surely Allah is aware of the things you do. You will not be able to treat your wives with absolute justice, not even if you keenly desire to do so. It suffices in order to follow the law of Allah that you do not wholly incline to one, leaving the other in suspense. If you act rightly and remain God-fearing, surely Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. But if the two separate out of His plenty, Allah will make each dispense with the other. Indeed, Allah is most bounteous, most wise. All that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth belongs to Allah. We enjoined upon those who were given the book before you and also yourselves to have fear of Allah. But if you disbelieve, then bear in mind that all that is in the heavens and that all that is in the earth belongs to Allah. Allah is self-sufficient, most praiseworthy. To Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, and Allah suffices for help and protection. If He wills, He has full power to remove you, O mankind, and bring in others in your place. He who desires the reward of this world, let him know that with Allah is the reward of this world and also of the world to come. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. Believers, be upholders of justice and bearers a witness to truth for the sake of Allah, even though it may be against yourselves or against your parents and kinsmen or the rich or the poor, for Allah is more concerned with their well-being than you are. Do not then follow your own desires lest you keep away from justice. If you twist or turn away from the truth, know that Allah is well aware of all that you do. Believers, believe in Allah and His Messenger and in the book He has revealed to His Messenger and in the book He revealed before. And whoever disbelieves in Allah, in His angels, in His books, in His messengers and in the last day has indeed strayed far away. Allah will neither forgive nor show the right way to those who believed and then disbelieved, then believed, and again disbelieved, and thenceforth became ever more intense in their disbelief. Give tidings of painful chastisement to the hypocrites, who take the unbelievers for their allies in preference to the believers. Do they seek honor from them, whereas honor altogether belongs to Allah alone? Allah has enjoined upon you in the book that when you hear the signs of Allah being rejected and scoffed at, 
You will not sit with them until they engage in some other talk, or else you will become like them. Know well, Allah will gather the hypocrites and the unbelievers in hell all together. These hypocrites watch you closely. If victory is granted to you by Allah, they will say, Were we not with you? And were the unbelievers to gain the upper hand, they will say, Did we not have mastery over you, and yet we protected you from the believers? It is Allah who will judge between you on the day of resurrection. And He will not allow the unbelievers in any way to gain advantage over the believers. Behold, the hypocrites seek to delude Allah, but it is He who has subjected them to delusion. When they rise to prayer, they rise reluctantly, and only to be seen by people. They remember Allah but little. They dangle between the one and the other, that is, faith and unbelief, and belong fully neither to these nor to those. And he whom Allah lets go astray, for him you can find no way. Believers, do not take the unbelievers as your allies in preference to the believers. Do you wish to offer Allah a clear proof of guilt against yourselves? Surely, the hypocrites shall be in the lowest depth of the fire, and you shall find none to come to their help except those who repent and mend their ways and hold fast to Allah and devote their faith exclusively to Allah. Such shall be numbered with the believers and Allah will certainly bestow on the believers a great reward. Why should Allah deal chastisement to you if you are grateful to Him and believe? Allah is all appreciative, all knowing. Allah does not like speaking evil publicly unless one has been wronged. Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Even though you have the right to speak evil if you are wronged, if you keep doing good, whether openly or secretly, or at least pardon the evil, then that is the attribute of Allah. Allah is all pardoning, and He has all the power to chastise. There are those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and seek to differentiate between Allah and His messengers and say, We believe in some and deny others, and they seek to strike away between the two. It is they indeed, they, who are beyond all doubt unbelievers, and for the unbelievers, we have prepared a humiliating chastisement. For those who believe in Allah and His messengers and do not differentiate between them, we shall certainly give them their reward. Allah is all-forgiving, all-compassionate. The people of the book now ask of you to have a book come down on them from heaven. Indeed, they had asked of Moses even greater things than this. For they said, Make us see Allah with our own eyes whereupon a thunderbolt suddenly smote them for their wickedness. Then they took to worshipping the calf after clear signs had come to them. We forgave them and conferred a manifest commandment upon Moses. And we raised the mount high above them and took from them a covenant to obey the commandment and ordered them, Enter the gate in the state of prostration. And we said to them, Do not violate the law of the Sabbath and took from them a firm covenant. They have incurred Allah's wrath for their breaking the covenant and their rejection of the signs of Allah and for slaying prophets without right and for saying, Our hearts are wrapped up in covers, even though in fact Allah has sealed their hearts because of their disbelief so that they scarcely believe. And for their going so far in disbelief as uttering against Mary a mighty calumny. And they're saying, We slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah whereas in fact they had neither slain him nor crucified him. But the matter was made dubious to them, and those who differed about it too were in a state of doubt. They have no definite knowledge of it, but merely follow conjecture, and they surely slew him not. But Allah raised him to himself. Allah is almighty, all wise. There are none among the people of the book but will believe in him before his death, and he will be a witness against them on the day of resurrection. Thus we forbade them many clean things which had earlier been made lawful for them for the wrongdoing of those who became Jews for their barring many from the way of Allah and for their taking interest which had been prohibited to them and for their consuming the wealth of others wrongfully. As for the unbelievers among them, we have prepared a painful chastisement. Those among them who are firmly rooted in knowledge and the believers, they believe in what has been revealed to you and what was revealed before you. Those who truly believe establish the prayer and pay zakah, firmly believe in Allah and in the last day. To them, we shall indeed pay a great reward. O Muhammad, we have revealed to you as we revealed to Noah and the prophets after him, and we revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the offspring of Jacob, and Jesus, and Job, and Jonah, and Aaron, and Solomon, and we gave to David Psalms, we reveal to the messengers we have already told you of, and to the messengers we have not told you of, and to Moses Allah spoke directly. 
These messengers were sent as bearers of glad tidings and as warners, so that after sending the messengers, people may have no plea against Allah. Allah is almighty, all wise. Whether people believe or not, Allah bears witness that whatever He has revealed to you he is revealed with His knowledge, and the angels bear witness to it too, though the witness of Allah is sufficient. Those who denied this truth and barred others from the way of Allah have indeed strayed far away. Likewise, Allah will neither forgive those who denied the truth and took to wrongdoing, nor will He show them any other way, save that of hell wherein they will abide, and that is easy for Allah. O people, now that the messenger has come to you bearing the truth from your Lord, believe in him, it will be good for you. If you reject, know well that to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth. Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. People of the book, do not exceed the limits in your religion and do not attribute to Allah anything except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah and his command that he conveyed unto Mary and a spirit from him which led to Mary's conception. So believe in Allah and in His messengers, and do not say Allah is a trinity. Give up this assertion. It would be better for you. Allah is indeed just one God. Far be it from His glory that He should have a son. To Him belongs all that is in the heavens and in the earth. Allah is sufficient for a guardian. Neither did the Messiah disdain to be a servant of Allah, nor do the angels who are near stationed to him and whoever disdains to serve him and waxes arrogant, Allah will certainly muster them all to himself. He will grant those who have believed and done good deeds their rewards in full and will give them more out of his bounty. He will bestow upon those who have been disdainful and arrogant a painful chastisement and they will find for themselves neither any guardian nor helper apart from Allah. O people, a proof has come to you from your Lord and we have sent down to you a clear light. Allah will surely admit those who believe in Him and hold fast to Him to His mercy and bounty and will guide them on to a straight way to Himself. People ask you to pronounce a ruling concerning inheritance from those who have left behind no lineal heirs. Galala, say, Allah pronounces for you the ruling, Should a man die childless but have a sister, she shall have one half of what he has left behind. And should the sister die childless, but have a brother, he shall inherit her. And if the heirs are two sisters, they shall have two-thirds of what he has left behind. And if the heirs are sisters and brothers, then the male shall have the share of two females. Allah makes his commandments clear to you, lest you go astray. Allah has full knowledge of everything.